Yeah, it's time for some retro classic game box review report stuff. I don't know quite what this is, but I'm going to be talking about a game, and it's right there. It's not very, very small, by the way, and I'm not particularly big. I know at the moment from this particular angle I look like I could eat it. Um, but uh, no, that's not the case. Atmosphere, the DVD board game. Pretty cool. You play against the gatekeeper. Now, uh, originally this was a VHS, and I had that. That was smart. But uh, the advantage of having the DVD version is that it can skip about, and you never quite know what's going to happen in the session. Sort of different random things can happen while the disc is skipping tracks, and it gives you more random stuff. So it's you, the players, going around the board versus the gatekeeper. And it's kind of like a gothic kind of trivial pursuit. Collect one of each colour of key and get into the middle and try and get to the well of fears and face your greatest fear and win. That is it, basically. But the gatekeeper turns on you and when he appears on screen you must say, Yes, my gatekeeper! So uh, the RPers out there will love this. And if you don't say yes, my gatekeeper, and he will get, he will check to see if you've done it or not, then he may well punish you. And there's lots of other ways he will punish you. And there's lots of other ways he'll get the players to punish each other and try and make you steal keys from each other. It's crazy. Let's take a look at the box. And obviously, I don't think you can buy this anymore. But uh, yeah, I was just really, really happy to get hold of this in a charity shop. Great stuff. Right, we'll get this open and take a look at what's inside. So, here's what we get. We get the DVD itself. We get the game board. This is the heart of the game, right here. So, it's essentially a great big graveyard. You'll see different coloured zones. Each of you play one of the different characters, which denotes your character colour. The Well of Fears goes in the middle. That's the stone that you get out on the well in. You roll one or two dice and you go around the board clockwise. You'll see that there's different stones and graveyard markers and this is... They all mean different things. There's dual stones and there's where you can duel other players for keys and there's uh, flight stones. Take you in on the game board. Let's uh, take a look at some of the detailing without too much glare. So you can see there with the cross swords, we're, we are looking at a dual one there. Next to it is that little key symbol. If you land on that, you get that key. Land on that, you get a uh, time card. Land on the skull one and you get a fate card. That's the shortcut flight one. You can fly to any other flight path one. Rules. Not too many. Double sided A4. Pad to write your great spheres in. Little pencil. We get uh, a deck of time cards. Here's an example time card. For atmosphere. An example is from 33 minutes 44 seconds through to 33 minutes 20 seconds the following effect if an opponent is muttering something about maggots and monsters repeat the following three times loudly so I can only conclude from looking at that card that the gatekeeper might well end up forcing a player into speaking about a load of madness like that and well if he happens to get your player doing that then you can turn that on one of the other players so that's a time card again you know I can see the uh, the role players out there would really really love this uh, there's a fake card what's this one this is just random of course punishment and this card to an opponent you would like to see punished Anyone who inflicts damage on that player can take one free turn. 
place this card directly in front of the maggot. That's right, the gatekeeper always refers to the players as maggots. Now, we've got the, uh, the keys of various different colours. You have to have one key of each colour and get to the middle to win. And the interesting thing is, there's these key storage things as well. They've got like little teeth things in the top. Each one of them's got a number. That number's very, very important. It gets drawn for you randomly. And um, the number you've got will have a massive effect on the game as well. Sometimes, you know, you've got to try and roll that particular number. You know, oh, you've been sent to a black hole. Um, the person with the with the most keys, I'm sending you to a black hole, for example, we might say, uh, randomly. Um, and you can't leave until you're able to roll your own number. So, you know, your own number is very important. But the other thing that this serves is what you do is you, you hide the key in it. So you can see the top part's grey, the bottom part's coloured. So it goes in here like that and rests, right, in through the, in through the top. Like that. Now what the players see is this. So they know that's a key there. And if they beat you in a duel, they take one of your keys, so they don't know what colour they're getting. So they choose it, and they might be like, Oh, I've already got a red. Yeah, damn it. Like that. So there is that. And of course there's the dreaded black key, which you can try and lose in a duel as well. And all the time you hold the, the dreaded black key, there's only one of them, you are cursed and you're unable to actually win the game, so you need to get rid of it. We've got the uh, player character cards. They're all really nice. We've got the vampire here. Elizabeth Bathory, and uh, there's a good little bit of story on the back of each of these as well. So, you know, the whole thing's very, very RP. We've got the zombie, we've got the mummy. I won't show you the backs of them all because, you know, I'm breaking copyright somewhat. The poltergeist, the witch, the werewolf. Each of those are a colour, each of those denotes starting positions on the board, of course we've got the dice, nice big chunky chunky d6s, the way you want them in good old retro game, look at those, look at the definition on those bad boys, they need to obviously be good and standing out because it's recommended you play with uh, low lighting and that, so we get the uh, well of fears itself, which goes on the centre of the board that I just showed you, some uh, design around the edges, I don't know how well you can see those uh, skulls on there. The lid, which pops on the top, with a very nice little design there. Yeah, very gothic. By looking at the playing pieces that um, they are used, so obviously there's the werewolf again, there's that playing piece. So that's uh, a vampire. The zombie, which is his hat. The witch, which is the pumpkin. The mummy, who's the daddy. And the child poltergeist. So we've got some macabre looking children's alphabet blocks. So you know what? If you see it in a charity shop, you should definitely pick it up. It's very, very silly. You know, you'll definitely have a laugh. Is it, is it fair? Of course not. The gatekeeper's trying to beat you all. And if there's a, there's a timer counting down on screen, which really, really puts the pressure on. You get like 49 minutes. And if none of you have got to the well in the middle by that time, then the gatekeeper beats all of you anyway. So, you know, you can try and screw each other as it is, but ultimately you might all lose. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's, that can happen. <laughs> Believe me. You know, you're just going to have a, you know, a good, honest, genuine, uh, fun time of it, really. I'm not sure if the other support ones they did, where they did the zombie one and the witch one, because I know they brought those out on VHS. I'm not sure if they're available for DVD as well. That would be cool, the, the uh, supplements. I'd like that. Maybe uh, one of you out there might know and can, uh, can tell me. Another one of the games in my collection, because, you know, a gaming night doesn't always have to be a uh, miniatures thing or a role-play gaming night, it can be something else. And This is one of those something else's. 
But until next time, I'll see you at the table.